first chapter which we are going to discuss here it's very very important chapter now electric charges and fields means what is meant by electricity that means electricity means the study of the charges electricity means the study of charges this study of charges takes place at two points one is the charges may be at rest or charges may be in motion now here there are two th things charges may be at rest and charges may be in motion that means here the study of the charges which are at rest is called electrostatics the study of the charges which are at rest is called electrostatics and all of you should note down the definitions very carefully don't do miss it the study of the charges which are at rest is called electrostatics that means the study of the charges which are in motion is called current electricity and magnetic effects will be, which will be discussed in further topic that means in the first two chapters of our ncrt we are going to discuss about the charges which are at rest that means the study of the charges at rest that one is called electrostatics in the name itself you can see electro means study of charges statics means at rest that means what is the definition for electrostatics the study of the charges at rest the study of the charges at rest then we have to discuss about what is meant by same electrostatics just now i told you the study of the charges at rest is known as electrostatics this is the definition just not on and what is meant by charge charge is nothing but charge is the property of matter that produces and experiences electrical and magnetic effects that means charge always produces an electrical and magnetic effects is called charge now further we are going to discuss about what is electrification what is electrification means the process of giving charge to a body the process of giving charge to a body is called electrification charge to a body is called electrification then what is the modern view of electrification we are going to discuss that one what is the modern view of electrification means according to modern view of electrification every atom every substance is made of atoms every substance is made of atoms every substance made of atoms and atom consists of what are atom consists of it consists of positively charged nucleus atom consists of positively charged nucleus and which was surrounded by negatively charged electrons charged electrons now here if you say atom that means every atom consists of equal amount of positive charge and equal amount of negative charge that means the positive charge amount amount of positive charge is equal to amount of negative charge generally generally amount of positive charge is equal to amount of negative charge now here that means we can say that whenever the amount of positive charge is numerically equal to amount of positive charge then we can say that the substance is electrically neutral the substance is electrically neutral suppose some of the electrons are transferred from one body to another body let's say that it is a substance a and it is a substance b now what happens some of the electrons from a are transferred to b then what happens the positive the electrons number of electrons on b is greater than number of protons on b then what happens happens it behaves like negatively charged body the body b behaves like a negatively charged body when you come across here some of electrons are transferred from a to b due to the reason number of protons on a is greater than number of electrons on a that indicates that it is having excess of positive charge it is having excess of positive charge that means if some electrons are transferred from one body to another body the body which loses here which one is losing electrons means a will lose electrons and b will gain electrons the body which loses electrons will behaves like positively charged body and body which gains electrons will behaves like a negatively charged body 
this is called modern view of electrification this processor is called modern view of electrification i think everyone is clear here according to modern of view of electrification simple words i'm saying every substance is made of atoms and atom consists of positively charged electrons which are in the nucleus and electrons are revolving around the nucleus if the substance is electrically neutral nuclear uh, electrically neutral then we can say that the number of electrons surrounded the nucleus will be equal to the the charge of the nucleus then what happens it is electrically neutral now suppose if you take two substances and during the process of electrification some of the electrons will be transferred from one body to the another body or some body will lose its electrons the substance which loses electrons will behaves like a positively charged body the substance which gain electrons will behaves like a positively uh, gains electrons will behaves like a negatively charged body everyone should write this notes after listening the topic of modern view you have to write in your own words notes for this topic okay let me continue the methods of electrification in methods of electrification what are the different methods the first method we can call charging by friction what is meant by charging by friction friction is nothing but suppose if you take two bodies and rub it together that means uh, in lower classes you have learned that a glass rod is coupled with silk cloth whenever during the rubbing of two bodies the body which has mm, uh, losing electrons will behaves like that means suppose body a was rubbed with body b due to the frictional energy that means some heat is generated that energy is utilized to transfer the electrons from one body to another body here the body which loses electrons will behaves like positively charged body just like we have discussed now and uh, the body which uh, gains electrons will behaves like negatively charged body here which body will gain electrons the substance which has higher electron affinity the substance which has higher electron affinity the substance which has higher electron affinity will gain electrons and it behaves like a negatively charged body the substance which has low electron affinity will lose the electrons and behaves like a positively charged body this is called charging by friction that means here during rubbing both are initially neutral bodies after rubbing together what happens in the substance which has higher electron will affinity will absorb the electrons or gain the electrons then behaves behaves like a negatively charged body suppose electrons are transferred from a to b then a becomes negatively body and b becomes positively charged body in this process initially a and b are neutral bodies and afterwards rubbing together a becomes afterwards a becomes here a becomes uh, here a becomes positively charged body and b becomes negatively charged body this is the point we have to remember and one more important thing is here during this process both the bodies will get the same magnitude of charge but opposite in size that means here some 10 electrons are lost by the a that's why the body a becomes like a positively charged body of 10 electrons and b is gaining 10 electrons due to that reason b is the negatively charged body of 10 electrons but both are getting same magnitude of charge but opposite in sign this is the method of friction this is the method of friction now the second method when we talk about the second method that is called charging by conduction what is meant by charging by conduction charging by conduction means it's a direct contact it's a direct contact means there is a sharing of electrons will takes place between the two bodies when they put contact for small time that means even the one contact that is a fraction of seconds if you place in a contact also it will gain electrons that means suppose a is negatively charged body and identical body of dimensions b was there and a and b are connected together with some connecting wire if a and b are connected together for some time then what happens the redistribution of charges takes place across a and b suppose initially the charge of this one is minus q a is and for this one charges of q b is zero therefore what is the total charge in this process total charge is q a plus q b which is nothing but minus q as the dimensions are same if you disconnect this wire or if you remove the joint then what happens after removing the joint 
the charge will be distributed across them the charge will be distributed across them equally if the dimensions are equal that means the charge on first body becomes as q by 2 minus q by 2 and b also minus q by 2 suppose the same body after becoming uh, this one is becoming as a becomes as minus q by 2 and b becomes as minus q by 2 now a will be in contact with some other body c for some time and removed then what happens now minus q by 2 is distributed among them afterwards this a becomes minus q by 4 and c becomes minus q by 4 like this we can make a, a number of bodies by placing in contact for some time this process is called conduction that means what is the process of conduction if a charged body is kept in contact with the uncharged body then the uncharged body becomes charged due to transfer of electrons to the other what is the definition of charging by conduction if a charged body is kept in contact with an uncharged body then the uncharged body becomes charged due to transfer of electrons to the other if the charged body is positive it will withdraw some electrons from charged body if the charged body is negative it will transfer some of its excess electrons to the uncharged body after both the bodies acquire the charge of same nature they will get charge of same nature but if you consider the friction they are getting charge of opposite nature but here they are getting charge of same nature that's why they repel each other that's why repel each other suppose if the two bodies are having initially some charges q1 and q2 after recombination the charge on each sphere is q1 plus q2 by 2 q1 plus q2 hello mm. charging by induction charging by induction means how the, the, the third processor is charging by induction as of now we have discussed two processes one is by charging by friction second one is charging by conduction those two methods we already discussed this is very very effective method of uh, giving charge to your body that is called methods of electrification that is called charging by induction what is meant by charging by induction suppose when a charged body is kept note down all this point when a charged body is kept closer to a neutral body when a charged body is kept closer to a neutral body charge is induced in the neutral body charge is induced in the neutral body this induction is due to realignment of charge in the neutral body this induction is due to realignment of charge in the neutral body the nearer side of neutral body gets unlike charge and the farther end gets unlike charge hence induction precedes attraction inducing body neither gains nor loses the charge inducing uh, body neither inducing body means the body which is trying to give charge to another body will neither lose the charge nor gain the charge but in the previous two situations they are losing the charges but here the inducer body which one you use to, to make a charging body that one will not lose the charge here this is the inducer body yes have you noted on the definition now let me explain this induction with an example now it's a sphere now it's a small sphere which was placed here on uh, on insulating stand on insulating stand it was placed and a positively charged body is brought closer to it due to the bringing of positively charged body closer to it what happens the nearer surface by the definition of induction we are saying the nearer side to the positively charged body will get unlike charge that's why it is getting negative charge here and the farther surface is getting positive charge here is it clear then the second thing in the second step what they are doing the outer surface the outer surface of the the farther end of the body is connected to earth the farther one is connected to earth whenever it's connected to earth earth is a huge reservoir of charges due to the huge reservoir of charges by adding some charges or removing the charges it will not alter the total charge on it that's why earth will supply some electrons to the body and it neutralizes the positively charged electrons and here in the next case if you see uh, it does not have positive charge and everything was also removed in C diagram. But the induced body, the induced body is still placed. That's why negative electrons are there, positive charges are removed. Now, if I remove, if I remove the induced body, the negative charged body is spread over the surface, sphere. That means the sphere becomes now which body? Negative charged body. 
suppose if i would like to make a sphere of positively charged body then induced body should be with charge instead of positive i will take negative the same thing will happen and we will get the induced charge on the body and you will become the charged body becomes as a either positively charged body or negatively charged body in this process the beautiness is here uh, the charged body we are using positively charged body this induced body is not losing charge either it is positive or negative it's not losing any charge in during this process that's why the induced body is trying to make infinite bodies by using this by infinite charged bodies without losing it we can do it that means here uh, one point i would like to say here if a dielectric is charged by induction suppose note down this point if dielectric is charged by induction then induced charge is less than inducing charge induced charge is less than inducing charge here q is induced charge and q dash is induced charge and q is inducing charge so that q dash equal to minus q into 1 minus 1 by k in case of conductors in case of conductors in case of conductors q dash equal to minus q since k equal to infinity since k equal to infinity are you clear is it clear charging by induction if you not understood one more time listen the charging induction and proceed next topic is basic properties of electric charges what are the different basic properties of electric charges what are the different types of basic properties of electric charges what are the different types of electric charges means first one is the charge is additivity of charge what is meant by additivity of charge what is meant by additivity of charge means charges can be added just like scalar quantities that means if i am saying about net charge the sum of positive charges plus sum of negative charges will give the net charge in your body suppose in an example i have some limited number of charges 1 coulomb minus 2 coulomb plus 3 coulomb minus 4 coulomb and plus 5 coulomb minus 6 coulomb minus 8 coulomb is there if i ask you what is the net charge on the body then simply adding 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 Plus five minus six minus eight, which will gives you net charge. Which will gives you net charge. That means what is the property of additivity of charge? Means the charges. If a system contains point charges, or if a total charge on a body is the simply sum of all the charges acting on the body. Simply sum of all the charges acting on the body. Next point is what is meant by charge invariance? What is meant by charge invariance means here. charge does not undergo any change due to its motion suppose we will say the charge is moving with constant velocity the charge is moving with acceleration it doesn't matter even though it is in motion suppose even the charge is in motion the magnitude of charge does not change that's why we can call it as charge is invariant what is the meaning of charge invariant the magnitude of charge does not change no down the magnitude of charge does not change due to its motion magnitude of charge does not change due to its motion next one is what is meant by charge quantization charge quantization means or charge quantized means here we know that the what is the minimum charge is in the universe means electron that means in the basic concepts of methods of electrification we are doing that we are saying that always charge transferred from one body to another body yes we are saying that uh, always charge transferred from one body to another body and one electron will be transferred two electrons will be transferred we are saying that we cannot say that half electron was transferred or one fourth electron was transferred like that we cannot say that means here what is meant by charge is quantized means always charge transferred from one body to another body in the multiples of charge of electron in the multiples of charge of electron that means multiples of charge of electron means maybe it was transferred as a one electron two electrons or three electrons like that it never be transferred as a half electron or one fourth electron that means it is always a charge of multiple of electron that's why whenever the charge is transferred from one body to another body 
in the multiples of charge of electron, then we can say that charge is quantized. Then you write the definition of charge quantization. Write down the definition. Charge is always transferred. Charge is always transferred. Charge is always transferred as an integral multiple of as an integral multiple of integral multiple of charge of an electron that is q equal to plus r minus n into e q equal to plus r minus n into e where e equal to 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 coulombs then i will ask a simple question that how much how many electrons are required to convert to get one coulomb of charge number of electrons to be transferred to get one coulomb of charge that means one equal to n into 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 the value of n is 6.25 into 10 to the power of 80. That means to get one coulomb of charge, we need to transfer a charge of how many electrons should be transferred? 6.25 into 10 to the power of electrons to be transferred. It's very, very large value. That means one coulomb is very, very large unit. One coulomb is very, very large unit. That's why you will always consider the charge as uh, in micro coulombs or milli coulombs. Micro coulombs or nano coulombs or milli coulombs. Charge is always transferred in integral multiple of charge of an electron. This is called charge quantized. Now, last property charge is conserved. Charge is conserved means what is the meaning of charge conservation? You know that what is the meaning of word conservation? What is the meaning of word conservation? That means conserved means remains constant. Here, which one is remains constant? Charge is remains constant. Where it will be remains constant in an isolated system. In an isolated system, charge will be transferred from A to B. If you see in the first example of A, the sum of electrons are transferred from A to B. For the system of A and B, the total charge remains constant. And you know, conduction also same thing has happened. But induction is a different case. Induction also is happening. F is a huge reservoir that is conserving with F. It is conserving with grounding. That means everywhere charge is conserved. Everywhere charge is conserved. That means in an isolated system, the total body, net charge of the body is always constant. It will not gain the charges or it will not lose the charges. No body can create charges. No body can uh, lose the charges. No one can create the charge. This is a very, very fundamental point. You are getting some charge means it was transferred from one body to another body. No one can create the charge. That means, here, what is meant by charge conserved? Within an isolated system, no doubt, within an isolated system, consisting of many charged body, due to interaction among the bodies, charges may get redistributed. Once again, within an isolated system, consisting of many charged bodies, consisting of many charged bodies, due to interaction among the bodies, due to interaction among the bodies, Charges may get redistributed. Charges may get redistributed. But it is found that the total charge of the isolated system is always conserved. Is always conserved. This is called charge conservation. This meaning is total charge is always constant in an isolated system yes next one we are going to discuss is Coulomb's law now next concept is Coulomb's law what is Coulomb's law according to this Coulomb's law is also called as inverse square at all according to Coulomb's law and they are saying that one charge can attract or repel the other charge. As, as we discussed in gravitation, just like gravitation, here also we are doing the same pattern. Now let us consider two point charges, Q1 and Q2. 
are separated by some distance r some distance by r now here in gravitation only attractive force will act but here as well as attraction along with repulsion that means the force of attraction or repulsion will take place that means here the force of attraction or repulsion is directly proportional to product of magnitude of the charges the force of attraction or repulsion between the two charges is directly proportional to product of magnitude of the charges and it is inversely proportional to square of the distance between the two charges here the product of magnitude of the two charges is directly the force of attraction or repulsion between the two charges is directly proportional to product of magnitude of the charges and inversely proportional to square of the distance between the two charges and to, to remove proportionality we are placing that is f proportional to q1 q2 by r square to remove proportionality we are placing some constraint k times of q1 q2 by r square from experimental observations the value of k is 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 by r square here the value of 1 by 4 pi epsilon not is 1 by 4 pi epsilon not value is 9 into 10 to the power of 9 9 into 10 to the power of 9 and uh, 9 into 10 to the power of 9 newton meter square newton meter square per coulomb square and here epsilon not is called permittivity of the medium here epsilon not is called permittivity of the free space or vacuum permittivity of free space and its value is 8.85 into 10 to the power of minus l12 coulomb square by newton meter square 8.85 into 10 to the power of minus 12 coulomb square per newton meter square is it clear now what is the statement of coulomb's inverse square law i think i am dictating now all of you note down the force of attraction statements i am dictating please note down it's a very time taking process to write on the board the force of attraction or repulsion the force of attraction or repulsion between two stationary electric charges the force of attraction or repulsion between two stationary electric charges is directly proportional to is directly proportional to the product of the product of magnitude of two charges magnitude of two charges and inversely proportional to and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and this force always acts and this force always acts along the line joining those two charges along the line joining these two charges along the line joining the two charges let's bit see here that means here the force always acts along the line joining means here q1 and q2 are line joining along this line that means suppose if this charges q1 q2 product is less than 0 that means they are unlike charges if they are unlike charges what we can say here this is q1 and it is q2 which is separated by r that's why here unlike charges means there is be attraction unlike for unlike charges what is the force of attraction there will be attraction due to that reason q1 is attracted by q2 that means f12 bar is the force acting on charge 1 due to 2 and f21 bar is the force acting on second charge due to first charge q2 first charge three f12 bar is the force acting on charge 1 due to charge 2 and f21 bar is the charge acting on second charge due to first charge that means it is the attractive force it is the attractive force that means here force is attractive now second one if the product of charges is greater than 0 that means they are like charges magnitude is same that's why they will be like charges that force is repulsive force if you show in the diagram this is q1 and q2 are charges separated by r then we can say that here 
F12 bar is the force acting on first charge due to second charge. That's why the first charge is repelled by Q2 as well as the second charge is repelled by charge F21 bar is in this direction. F12 bar is left and F21 bar is right. That means F12 bar is the force acting on the first charge due to second charge and F21 bar is the force acting on second charge due to first charge. This is the indication of direction of forces. Is the indication of direction of forces. Now, if I would like to write Coulomb's law in vector form, Coulomb's law in vector form, Coulomb's law in vector form, then we can write here the Coulomb's law force are between two charges can be written as that means this is Q1 and it is Q2 and separation is R21 bar. That means position of 1 with respect to R21 bar. Then we can say that we can say that F21 bar, that means force acting on second charge due to first charge can be written as 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 divided by R21 square into R21 cap. R21 cap is the unit vector which gives the direction of the drawing. That means if you write the mag, uh, F21 bar still, that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 by R21 square into R21 bar divided by R21, which gives for you 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 divided by R21 cube into R21 bar. This is the force between the two forces. Similarly, if you calculate F12 bar in vector notation, that gives 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught Q1 Q2 by R12 cube into R12 bar. That's why as we know that R12 bar is equal to minus R21 bar, then we can say that F12 bar is equal to minus F21 bar. Here we can say that the forces acting on either on first charge or second charge are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. That's why here the Coulomb's law agrees with Newton's third law. Coulomb's law agrees with which law? Newton's third law. Now some important points regarding about electrostatic force. All of you note down. First point is electrostatic force is a conservative force. First point is electrostatic force is a Conservative force. Conservative force means in work for energy we have discussed what is meant by conservative force means if the work done by the force in a closed loop is zero, then we can say that the force is conservative force. That means while here electric force is a conservative force, therefore work done by force in a closed loop equal to how much means it will be zero. Now, second point electrostatic force is a central force. Electrostatic force is a central force. If they are saying that electrostatic force is a central force, then we can say that there is no angular momentum. There is no angular dependence. There is no angular dependence. There is no angular dependence is nothing but the angular momentum about that system is zero. That means always in central forces, always the force acts along the line joining the charges, along the line joining the charges. This is the reason it's a central force. Next one is always Coulomb's force always forms action reaction where just now we have discussed. These are some important points. Now, what is the meaning of permittivity? Just now we have given permittivity of free space epsilon. Water. What is meant by permittivity means it is the property of the medium which influences the force between the charges. It is the property of the medium. It is the property of the medium which influence
the force between the charges which influence the force between the charges is known as permittivity is known as permittivity and si unit of permittivity and everything already given in the class next class phase permittivity means it influence that means gravitational force does not depending upon medium between the two masses but electric force depends upon the medium between the medium between the two charges therefore we have to define a quantity that is called relative permittivity next we have to define a definition that is called a relative permittivity that means it is depending on the medium force we have to define relative permittivity means epsilon by epsilon not epsilon means permittivity of medium epsilon not is permittivity of free space that means relative permittivity can be de defined as it is the ratio of permittivity of the medium to the permittivity of free space or vacuum permittivity of medium or free space it is also called as dielectric constant dielectric constant then we can say f bar is equal to magnitude of f bar equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 by r square in vacuum that is fm bar magnitude is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon q1 q2 by r square the same charges are placed in medium then we'll get this one now by dividing fm by f is equal to epsilon not by epsilon epsilon not by epsilon not that's why It is equal to one by k. Therefore, force between the two charges F by k, the force between the two charges decreases by k times. Suppose the same charges are placed in a medium, the force between the two charges de uh, decreases by how many times? K times. That means the force between the two charges depends on three parameters. Note down. One is the nature of medium between the two charges. The force between two charges in a medium is depending on how many factors? Three factors. Note down. first one is nature of the medium between the two charges second one the separation between the two charges third one the magnitude of the two charges the magnitude of the two charges these are the three main factors and last but not least the one is limitations of coulomb's law what are the limitations of coulomb's law this one is very very important there are two limitations coulomb's law is valid only for point charges it is valid only for point charges it's valid only for point charges it's valid only for point charges means so what happens if i consider instead of point charges spheres if you consider instead of point charges as spheres just now we have discussed in the phenomenon of induction this is charge q1 and q2 it will induce some charges here suppose it is a negative charge and it is a positive charge then it will induce some negative charges here and due to the inductive effect additional force will act and it will alter the net force acting on it it will alter the net force acting on it that's why coulomb's law is valid for static charges only it's not valid for uh, spherical bodies or extended bodies now second one coulomb's law valid it is valid only for static charges only for static charges sir why static charges see 
a stationary charge can produce only electric field but a moving charge can produce both electric and magnetic field due to the reason the electrical force of interaction also takes place between the two charges therefore if the charge is in motion if the charge is in motion it has both electric force and magnetic force therefore net force equal to f electric power plus f magnetic power that means the net electric force will not be shown here additionally magnetic force will come and it will not show the coulomb's charges that's why net charge will be variant and next one is force between multiple charges just like in gravitation force between multiple charges it's also called principle of collision that means we have discussed only the force between two point charges sir suppose there are a number of point charges sir let it be considered as this is the charge q q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 there are a lot of charges sir now let's consider the separation between q and q1 is r1 the separation between q and q2 is r2 q and q3 is r3 and r4 r5 there are infinite forces therefore the forces will act also act on q this is f3 bar this is f1 bar the force acting on this if i am considering all are attractive like such as f2 bar f5 bar and f4 that means they are acting in various direction therefore net force acting on charge q is equal to the vector sum of all the forces acting on it f1 bar plus f2 bar etc etc if any charges are there fn bar this principle is called principle of superposition or force between multiple charges and we can write the statement as like this note down the resultant force on any point charge the resultant force on any point charge due to a number of other charges due to a number of other charges due to a number of other charges is the vector sum of all the forces is the vector sum of all the forces on the charge on the charge due to the other charges due to the other charges taken one at a time taken one at a time the individual forces are unaffected the individual forces are unaffected due to the presence of other charges due to the presence of other charges this is called principle of superposition and force between multiple charges thank you and this is up to here we have discussed and we have to discuss furtherly ncert numericals and some concepts we'll discuss in next session thank you